In this tour, I'm going to be going over the walking counter that I said we were going to implement next. So, pretty much how it works is every time the player is currently walking, I set up a function to check every second to see if um, we've hit the random number that starts the encounter. So, that's the way that I set it up. I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to set it up, but uh, that's about the basics. And another thing I changed was. Um, how the player could move diagonally before, I disabled that, so I just make them walk forward, backwards, left, right, and they can only press one key at a time, or use one key at a time. That would make more sense if we're making like a Pokemon-like game, because uh, in those games, you, I don't believe you can walk diagonally at all. You can only walk in one direction at a time. So I just changed that up. You guys can leave it how you want, or try reworking the code to make the walking work with that code. It shouldn't be too difficult, um, but yeah, I'll maximize this real quick. So I added in a new variable for walking, and I set that to false. Now this is what we're going to be keeping track of to check whether we should um, roll a random to see if an enemy or if an enemy encounter should start. So that's pretty much what I'm using for walking currently. And then I put walking equals true for each one of these. So we need to set that in there to tell the code that, or to let it know that we're we're currently walking, so it should be rolling a random to check if we should encounter an enemy. And then, so I change these to if, and then some else if, else if statements, and then an else statement. So if we're not pressing any of these keys, or if we're not pressing that key, it'll go through and check these keys. If we're not pressing any of these keys, it'll do the last statement. So that's how we're going to tell if we're either walking or walking or not walking. And in here, I made a walk counter. So this is what I'm going to be using for checking whether when you're walking, if an enemy should, it should be rolling to pop up an enemy or start an enemy uh, encounter. So I created a for loop, so this will go on forever. It'll just keep looping through this code. We've gone over this plenty of times. And then I used yield wait for second. So instead of having this code be called um, like 30 times per second or whatever the update function is, I decided to make it wait every second so it's not being called so much because enemies will just be popping up every second if we had it called that many times. So I just want to wait a second and then call the code again. So that's what I set up. And then we have if walking equals true. So if we are walking, we want to uh, roll a random. So I did encounter enemy equals random dot range. And this is what we use for rolling a random number between, I believe it's one through nine. I don't believe it goes up to 10, it's just between 1 and 9. And then I did a simple debug.lock and put our encounter enemy into there. So every time it rolls a random, we'll see it pop up in the little debug area below. And maybe I'll bring up the window just to show you guys uh, what pops up. But right after that, we put if enemy encounter equals 5. So if this random, so every time it loops through here, it'll roll a brand new random and it'll plug it into there and this will check if it equals 5 so if this number equals 5 then we want to start our enemy encounter so I did start encounter which I made a new function for and this is where we're going to be starting our enemy encounter and that'll be in a different tutorial hopefully in the next tutorial I'll cover how to start an enemy encounter and do all that but yeah, in here I just changed walking to false. I'm probably going to have to set something else up. I'm probably going to make it so you won't be able to move after after that's selected. Or actually, hmm, I might actually make this entire script disabled and switch to a separate script for the actual encounter. Because I know in those games you use arrow keys for... Uh, scrolling through the different attacks and such. So 
either I might disable the script or I might I might change up this maybe I'll do one for if walking or if players walking and then I'll do if players in combat and it'll be a different selection or I could have a completely random script for uh, the actual encounter which I might do that because it might make a little more sense to do that I could disable the movement script so our character isn't moving switch over to something else activate a different script for uh, the encounter but at the same time I want to keep all the variables the same so I guess I could just throw it all into this script in the future I guess I'll figure that all out but yeah that's pretty much how I set up the walking to get into combat uh, later tutorials I will cover like I said before how to walk through grass and make encounter start or make them disabled when you're walking in a certain area we're gonna be doing that with uh, trigger boxes and maybe I'll show you guys how to make like custom ones maybe I'll model out a custom one that we can use or just show you how to set up that but we'll go in here I'm going to pop up the council just because that's kinda hard to see down there so I'll just start walking seven eight seven so if I stop it stops uh, rolling numbers until I start moving again five start encounter so as soon as we hit five it started the encounter and so yeah it's going to disable movement so we can't move this character around so we can jump from here into our uh, battle and then once we finish we'll jump back in here and be able to control our character again